So to some degree, the conscience can be viewed as the voice of reciprocal society within, and that's a perfectly reasonable biological explanation. But, but the thing is, is the deeper you go into biology, the more it shades into something that appears to be religious, because you start analyzing the fundamental structure of the psyche itself, and, and it becomes something Well, it be becomes something with a power with with a with a with with a power that transcends your ability to resist it. Hmm. So, okay, so you can think about Christ from a psychological perspective, and the, the critic, the critic, my critic, this particular critic that I've been reading, said, "Well, that that doesn't differentiate Christ much from a whole sequence of dying and resurrecting mythological gods." And of course, people have made that claim in comparative religion. Joseph Campbell did that, and Jung to a lesser degree, I would say, but Campbell did that. But the difference, and C.S. Lewis pointed this out as well, the difference between those mythological gods and Christ was that there's a, there's a representation of, there's a historical representation of his, of, of his existence as well. Now, you can debate whether or not that's genuine, you can debate about whether or not he actually lived and whether there's credible objective evidence for that, but it doesn't matter in some sense because this, well, it does, but there's a sense in which it doesn't matter because there's still a historical story. And so what you have in the figure of Christ is an actual person who actually lived plus a myth. And in some sense, Christ is the union of those two things. The problem is, is I probably believe that. But I don't know. Okay. I don't. I'm amazed at my own belief, and I don't understand it. Like, because I've seen. Sometimes. The objective world. And the narrative world touch. You know that's union synchronicity. Yeah. And I've seen that many times in my own life. And so, in some sense, I believe it's undeniable, you know, we have a narrative sense of the world. For me, that's been the world of morality. That's the world that tells us how to act. It's real. Like, we treat it like it's real. It's not the objective world. But the narrative and the objective world touch. And the ultimate example of that, in principle, is supposed to be Christ. But I don't know what to... And that seems to me oddly plausible. Yeah. But I still don't know what to make of it. It's too, in part because it's too terrifying a reality to fully believe. I don't even know what would happen to you if you fully believed it. If you believed in the story of Christ, or if you believed that history and, and let's say, the narrative make meet, let's both, say. Both, I yeah. think. I think you, because when you believe that, you buy both those stories. You believe that yeah. the narrative and the objective can actually touch.